Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Normally I make videos about wigs. If you guys enjoy that type of content, if that's what you're looking for, definitely head over to my channel and check it out. I have a very long playlist full of wig videos if you're interested, this wig included. But anyway, I decided to start this video today because I realized majority of the content on my channel is not personal like at all and so i wanted to do a video and kind of tell you guys a little bit more about myself so this is going to be a little i don't even know what to call this video yet but i'm going to tell you guys a little bit about myself and i'm going to be a little bit vulnerable and tell you about some of my experiences because what i've been wanting to do is have more sit down and talk videos and to be able to share my knowledge with people and i was sitting here thinking what should i make a video about but where should I start, basically? And I've had a hard time starting because I realized nobody has asked me anything. And nobody's going to ask me anything because nobody knows me yet. So I want to give you guys an opportunity to get to know me, basically. If you didn't know already, my name is Victoria. That is me. I don't think I ever say my name. And funny story, for the longest time... Um, I didn't go by my name on social media, my real name. And that has more to do with where I was in life at the time. And we may or may not get into that. I don't know. It depends on how I feel. So I am Victoria. I go by Victoria Pearson. I am not married yet, but I am engaged. But that man is my man. So I'm claiming his last name, even though it hasn't happened yet. I'm still claiming the name. So yeah, I am engaged. I have two kids. I am a stay-at-home mom at the moment. I am also a content creator. I create a lot of content centered around beauty and fashion. Well, at least that was my center focus. But now I'm sort of transitioning out of beauty and fashion. Not because I dislike it, but because I desire a greater purpose in life. And I really don't want my focus to be about looking good, if that makes sense. Because I'm not a shallow person, and I don't want to be perceived as shallow or vain or that I'm just all about my looks, because I'm not. You may have seen some of my content, some of my outfits, or whatever. That's good if you enjoyed it. I'm glad you did, because that's always the purpose. I hope that whoever sees my content learns something, gains something from it in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, I am a creative, basically, and I've come to realize that that is who I am to my core. I love to create anything artistic, anything creative. I love it. Like, that is what gets me going every day. If I could create something every day, I would be fulfilled. So yeah, that's the basics of me. That's sort of what the world already knows. But as I mentioned, I do want to dive more into some personal and deeper conversations here on my platform. And so I want to take this opportunity to tell you guys a little story. Now, this is not going to be um, perfect because I'm going to be honest, I'm not a great storyteller at the moment. I am working on it. Okay, because I know that's a part of like speaking. I've been taking a public speaking class because that's one of my goals this year to work on my speaking my speech basically but let me tell you my life story okay i'm gonna tell you a little a little little little, little snippet okay and i want to tell this story because i had a conversation with my dad last year when i visited him for thanksgiving i had to get my son situated what was i saying yeah i had a conversation with my dad last year around thanksgiving and after the conversation it made me realize no, I won't say that. It made me realize. He told me. He told me, and I. it took me some time to accept it. But I have a story that needs to be told. And I've had a lot of shame around my story, my life story, the things I did in my early 20s and whatnot. But 
as I am healing and learning and growing, okay, I'm becoming more accepting and loving of myself. I now feel more comfortable with sharing my past experiences in the hopes that it helps somebody, okay? Not to put myself out there for attention or fame or anything else, but I do want to share because I do think that it could potentially help somebody. And I think about myself when I was younger. Had I known about the situations that I were in, oh, I would not have made the decisions that I made. So that's why I want to share. I want to share my story and hopefully some young ladies out there will hear me. Okay. And they will not go down the same path that I did or, you know, that you take something from it. Okay. So let's, whatever, let's get started. So when I was in high school, how many people know this? Cause I don't brag. I don't like to brag on myself, but I, I graduated high school. Um, top five in my class. I had a 4.2 GPA. It's not a hard thing to attain, in my opinion. That's why I don't brag. Because, like high school is so easy. High school is so easy. Um, but yeah, I graduated top of my class, and I feel like other people who may have graduated top of their class had a lot more opportunities. I was the only black person in the top five or top ten in my class to graduate. The other students, I feel like they had a lot more opportunities. And me coming from a single family home, I was not in touch with my dad at the time. So I was just living with my mom. Coming from a single parent home and my mom not going to college and didn't know much about higher education. I therefore didn't know much about higher education because she was my only source of information. I don't blame her for that, but yeah, I didn't have many options. I didn't see any options. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what I could do with my life. And so I basically just listened to the people that were around me. And the people that were around me told me to go to college. And I only applied to two colleges because they looked cool, right? And I only got accepted into one, but it was super freaking expensive and I couldn't afford it. And so I was like, I guess I'm not going to school. And then out of nowhere, I, it was like the last week of high school. The VP of admissions for Livingstone College, which is where I graduated from, met me in the front office. I used to work in the front office when I was in high school. He met me in the front office, asked me what college I was going to. And we had a little conversation about my GPA and whatnot. And he was like very shocked that, you know, I didn't have any opportunities. And we had a conversation and basically gave me a full ride scholarship. So I went to college. I didn't have to pay for tuition or anything. Majority of my college was paid for. There were some things that I did, I did struggle with. And that's an important part of my story as well. So if you are in high school, listen, if you are a high school girly, do your research. Okay, that's the first thing I want to say. Do your research. There are a lot of opportunities out there for you. Um, even if you don't, don't have a high GPA like I did, like, I really feel like that opportunity was just planted for me. I did absolutely no research. Like, God was like, you're not going to waste your gifts here. Okay. That's how that happened for me. When I got to college, I was not prepared. I was not prepared at all. I wasn't prepared for, I wasn't pre prepared for anything, girl. Nothing. Even though I had a full ride scholarship, I struggled a lot in college financially. Like I said, not a, I came from a single parent household. I did grow to build a relationship with my dad while I was in college, but like for me, it was still brand new and like I didn't fully really trust him kind of thing. And so when I was in college, I really felt like I didn't have anyone. I felt like I was completely on my own and I didn't have anything. And I feel like that's not something that's talked about in the black community in terms of higher education. When you go off to college, you still need your family's support. And I felt like I didn't have any. And I know I'm not the only person that goes through this. Because while I was in college, I noticed it. Nobody, nobody had any support. <laughs> they just threw us, they just threw us out there and said, you'll be fine. Get your degree and you'll be good. No. Like, 
when you go to college, you still need support. And if you feel like you don't have support when you go there, I would advise you to either find some support or maybe wait to go because being in college, taking on all these courses, having to buy your own clothes, having to pay for textbooks, having to buy your own food if you don't have a meal plan. And listen, I had a meal plan. My food was covered, like we had food from the school, but it was disgusting, okay? It was disgusting and it was unhealthy majority of the time. And it was also very limited. So I was, I won't say I was starving, but it was just very uncomfortable. I get a little heated when I talk about my experience with college because as a black woman, I feel like I've been pressured to be very appreciative of having the opportunity to go to college. But I honestly, and speaking from my experience, I personally feel like I could have done, I could have gotten a little bit farther in life had I gone down a different route. And not that college was a complete waste. It wasn't, it was a good experience. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. But for me, college was very traumatizing as well. And so that's why I get a little, I get a little all over the place when I talk about it because I had a lot of traumatic experiences in college. And I know that I'm not the only person that has traumatic experiences in college, but people don't talk about it. People don't talk about, about how traumatizing it is because you're a young adult. You don't fully understand what's going on and you're just like, thrown into the real world and then you have all this stuff like on top all these extra pressures piled on top of you like graduating paying tuition paying for books having to travel back and forth finding a job if you can't afford it like and on top of that wondering if this degree is even worth it like it's so long sorry my son likes to check on me um what was I saying? Yes, I had a lot of traumatic experiences in college, but I am learning to accept them, you know, grow from them, all that good stuff. Um, one of uh, the things that happened while I was in college that sort of shaped who I am today, um, I met a man, as we all do when we're young. <laughs> I met a man and he was not a good man. I thought that he was, but he was not. And so while I was in college, me thinking that I was in love and was going to be taken care of, I got pregnant when I was in college and I didn't know anything about abortions. I love my daughter now. Okay. I'm not saying that I would have aborted her, but I didn't know anything about that. My only option in my mind was that I'm pregnant and I'm going to be a mom. a mom. And so, yeah, this was like sophomore year. We're like in the thick of it, in the thick of it. I became a mom. Right. And as soon as I get, got pregnant, that man disappeared completely disappeared off of the face of the earth. I still to this day have no idea where he is. Um, and so since then I have been a single mom and that really changed a lot for me while I was in college because I was a single mom. I had no support. Well, I won't say I had no support. I had little to no support. I had to stay above a 3.7 in my GPA. So I basically had to get all A's in my classes in order to maintain my scholarship. So I was juggling that on top of working because I had another mouth to feed. So it was a lot. It was a lot for me and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, I made it through gracefully. I did. I made it through. I did graduate college. I actually graduated. What's it called? And I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. Okay. I was valedictorian. Okay. I graduated valedictorian when I graduated from college, so I did something right. But also while I was in college, because I was struggling so much, I I fell into some deep shit, bitch. I fell into some deep. I fell into some deep shit. Let me let me take a second. I fell into some deep shit. While I was in college, I had a good job. I was working at a fast food restaurant. I won't name the restaurant. It was good. It was great. Um, but the pay wasn't enough for me because like I said, I had another mouth. To feed. And so being pretty and at that time, the stripper lifestyle was like so glamorized and I was just so fixated on it. Seeing like girls make thousands of dollars in one night. And I was like, yo, I need that. 
Like I, I need that and I can do it, bitch. I can do it. I am one of those people that like when I set my mind to something, if I say I can do it, then I can do it. <laughs> like I didn't see anything stopping me. So I tried, obviously, because I knew I could do it. And once I got in, I was hooked. Like I was hooked. I was like, this is me. This is for me. Forget all the other stuff. And even though I graduated top of my class, I don't know, school has always been easy for me. Even though I graduated top of my class, I still was like so used to and so attracted to the fast money lifestyle. I didn't see anything else. And so when I graduated, that's where I stayed because that was the only good thing I saw at the time. I didn't know anything else. And so fast forward, I'm out of college. I'm still in that stripper lifestyle because fuck everything else, I was just about getting money, right? And yeah, I was making money, but I didn't see it at the time, but it did come at a cost. And so that's why I, that's another reason why I want to tell the story because there's a lot of, it's a lot of good things that you can learn from me. That lifestyle is so attractive because all you see is money and the girls look pretty and they're getting all the attention and this and that. There is a lot of emotional baggage that comes with it. A lot. And if you are not an emotionally strong, emotionally and mentally strong person, you can get hooked on a lot of things in that lifestyle. I luckily was not one of those people to get, you know, you know what I'm talking about, to go down that road. But I did see it happen a lot. And those girls will never talk about it. People in that industry will never talk about it. But it is something that happens a lot. Fast forward, I was in that industry for a couple of years because, bitch, I was all about my money. You couldn't tell me nothing else. I was getting paid. And I did gain a lot. I gained a lot from that, being in that industry. I gained a lot of followers, gained a lot of attention, I had a lot of money. I had the car that I wanted, I had the apartment that I wanted, like, me and my daughter were good, like, she was going to this fancy school, like, it was paying for everything. But shortly before I exited that industry, I started therapy. And I think this was the turning point for me. I started therapy and it really just opened my eyes to what I was being exposed to and what I was allowing to happen to me that I would not want anyone to experience. And I won't say specifics because I don't I don't think it's necessary. I, th- I like to think that y'all are smart enough to know. <laughs> like I like to think that y'all watch enough movies to know and understand what can happen in strip clubs. So, yeah, I started therapy. Not that my therapist advised me to quit stripping, but she did ask me a lot about like what I really wanted with my life. And every time the answer was like, not this, (laughs) but I'm doing it. And I feel like having those sessions and really vocalizing it. And this is why I've been getting into speech because I realize there is power in your voice, in your words, in expressing yourself. The more I started expressing that I didn't want to be there, the more things started changing around me. And I think in an effort to really push me out of that environment, and this is where this is where the story gets cute. The biggest thing that pushed me out of that environment was when I met my fiance. We both were not in like the best places in our lives when we met. Literally the the day I met him, I was like, I'm, I want something different. I'm tired of this shit. Like, <laughs> like God saved me from this lifestyle. And that was the day that we met. And the more time we spent with each other, the less I wanted to be in that lifestyle. And I just wanted to, I guess, be who I am now. I didn't see it back then. But that's really what I wanted. I just wanted to be. I wanted to be in a space where I can just be myself be loving and be loved and be creative and not not feeling like I have to belittle myself, degrade myself for things. And so we met, we hang out, and we fell in love. And over time, I was just like not wanting to spend so much time in that environment, wanting to spend more time with him. And I was slowly getting there on my own, but then 
I like to say God pushed me because <laughs> he knew I wasn't going to do it on my own. And one night I was working and then out of nowhere, literally, literally out of nowhere, they decided to fire me. At the time, I was very angry and I was like, what? They, they didn't give me a reason. And it just really pissed me off at the time. But now I see it. It was really my blessing in disguise. I got fired and me being stubborn, I still wanted to try and find a job in that industry at another place, but I couldn't because God said this ain't for you. I couldn't find a job anywhere else. So I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I was like, fuck it. I won't do it no more. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I learned to accept that that's not where I'm meant to be. And that's taken me a long time because like I said, it's a very addicting lifestyle. You get addicted to like just having money in your hands all the time. You get addicted to being pretty all the time. Well, not being pretty all the time because that's not so bad. But you get addicted to like having to dress up all the time, having to put on the face. You get addicted to the attention. You get addicted to the things, the lifestyle and just everything so that took a while for me to mentally and emotionally let go and I'm glad that I am at a place where like I don't crave it anymore and I love myself more than I love the things in the lifestyle I value myself I care about myself I care about my health and my well my spiritual wealth and all of those things so yeah that's kind of my story. That's where I'm at now. Hopefully that opens up the door for us to have more conversations about anything that I discussed in this video. Anything pertaining to trauma, relationships, spirituality. Oh, I could go all day about spirituality. But, but yeah, and I hope y'all yeah, really hope that opened the door for y'all to feel more comfortable with asking me more questions about things that I may know about. I'm going to try to wrap this video up now because my son keeps begging for my attention. Yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy this video, learning a little bit more about me. I hope you feel more comfortable with asking me questions, having discussions. I'm an open book at this point because I've learned to love and accept myself and all my flaws. All right, there you go. You have a sock on your foot. But yeah, that is it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Again, if you're interested in any of my hair content, here's a video. Check it out. And if you're not subscribed already, definitely subscribe to my channel. Join the family. Meet me in the comment section because I'm ready to talk. <laughs> and that is it. That's all for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.